have I never before wanted to lick sharp objects before in my entire life. And, yeah, the reason the Red Monk has not uploaded lately, that's because I was in the fucking nut house. Now, the nicer term is inpatient psychiatric hospital. I'm in the fucking psych ward. And, as of today, I'm liberated. I'm a free man. Now, uh, this is a, this is a very interesting story of how the, the Red Monk ended up in the fucking nut house with a ton of fucking psychopath who, like, sleep on the floor, who told you that the TV's talking to them. And, uh, I mean, I've had depression for, like, two years now, and I do a very horrible job at, uh, maintaining it. I'm not gonna sully my, the good name by telling what I did to try to, uh, reduce the depression, but it ended up with me having a breakdown, and my dad said, he said, okay, you're gonna go to the hospital, or I'm gonna call the cops on you, and if someone ever says they're gonna call the cops on you, unless you go to a psychiatric hospital, that is a criminal charge without trial, that is a criminal charge without trial, so I sign myself in, and I'm in this fucking white room, they put me in this fucking white room, I'm fucking nuts, shit, I'm in the white room for like three hours, Zoned the fuck out. They gave me, like, a hell of fucking drugs. I'm just like, duh. And I ended up in the fucking nut house. If we believe that. And for the last week, I just got out today. Out of the nut house. And shit, was it, uh... It was a good fucking time. I really, really... I met a lot of good people. And I really feel a thousand times better. And they got me on some, uh, antidepressants. And uh, for my college, I won't be able to, I'll be grounded for a year, but I'll still be able to continue without changing my major, because you know, all I've had was depression, and the only reason I ended up in the fucking nut house is because I didn't manage it well. But I'm back, I'm back, and I've, I had problems uh, losing a ton of weight, because you can tell, it looked like a ton of fucking baseball bats glued together, just a real, just a fucking twig. So, uh, yeah, it's because, uh, the depression I was under eating. So I'm in the fucking nut house, right? And some of the shit you take for granted in your daily fucking life, like, uh, fucking pens that don't fucking bend. These are the fucking pens we get. These are the fucking pens that they have in the nut house. Imagine trying to write with this. It's a fucking bendy pen. Uh, they made it so you cannot hurt yourself or the clients. Because, you know, you're living with people who are, you know, actively suicidal or actively homicidal. Because it's a fucking nut house, right? These people are fucking nuts. So, let's let's go for the story chronologically, okay? Thursday night, I arrive, and I'm just fucking out of it. I'm on so many fucking drugs. They, they drugged me. I didn't drug myself. Well, well, that's not for contention, but the point is I'm fucking out of it. I gotta sign all my fucking papers with a fucking bendy pen. Like, this is feels so, a, a real pen feels so fucking real, right? Compared to this fucking nut house pen. Shit. And, and the things you take for granted. And next morning, I wake up, and every day, you see the psychiatrist, and he's a, a Siberian dude. And he's actually a really fucking cold, he's kind of, he's kind of rude, he's kind of brash, and he's kind of, made a mockery of my issues but I mean we talked in the morning when I got up is uh I'm not gonna say his name but he's like yeah you're depressed and he gave me some you know basic antidepressants uh I think like Vol it starts with a V Voloff or something he's like yeah we'll keep you here for a week make sure you don't show any bad side effects it takes about two weeks for the drugs to two weeks for the drugs to kick in um and then we kind of discussed putting on withdrawal medicine but we didn't in the end and so I walk out and it's just this hallway right and all the windows have a glass pane in front of it so you can't jump out of the window all the pens are fucking bendy oh shit like some of the shit you take for granted no sharp objects no strings if you had a hoodie they won't let you have it. Like, this clothes right here, they won't let you have it because you can, you know, hang yourself, right? Because this is a fucking nut house. Everyone's fucking nuts. 
um, all the faucets are like, all the, you know, when the water comes out of the faucet, it's all pushed in so you can't bang your head against anything. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, the TV was in a, a glass container so you can't break it. And they, uh, they scan you and take everything from you. So it's like you're trapped in the fucking 80s. No phone. No computer. Like, no fucking porn. No fucking PS4. All you have is TV, which is live. And it was actually a pretty nice fucking stay. I met some really nice people. I'll, I'll go through the people I met by their uh, first letter of their name. So, you know, you know, privacy. Privacy reasons. The first person I really started talking to was in her 50s. She has a son uh, and another son. And their ages are 30 years apart. And she has, a, like, I think, schizophrenia or something. And literally, uh, you talk to her, and she's obsessed with the fucking Bible. All she talked about was fucking Jesus. And she's a little bit heavier, but she was nice and sociable. So, uh, yeah, her name was S. The first letter of her name was S. Uh, there was another girl whose first letter of her name was T. And she kept on talking about her inner blank. She was like, I need to find my my inner country. I need to find my inner chi. I need to find my inner peace. Uh, she was pretty cool. Uh, she keeps on she keeps on talking about how she stressed herself into a miscarriage. Which I think she was just imagining it because she's kind of fucked. She's kind of loco. I'm a good person, but insane. And like, I'm just here on uh, poorly managed depression. So I'm like, I, you can look at me, I'm pale, I'm weird. But I mean, compared to these people, they're fucking weird. There's this one guy, his name's uh, K. Just came out of 10 months in prison because he was a cocaine seller. Uh, this, this guy sold cocaine, and he has a ponytail on the back of his head that looks like a fucking turd. And you could you, you would pull it up, and it would, the ponytail would stay there. The turd would maintain his position. Uh, his name was K. He was pretty fucking cool. Well, we talked for a bit. He's older. I mean, he put, he was one of the poor victims of nonviolent drug offenders. So he got like 10 months in prison over, you know, a certain amount of cocaine because he definitely uses cocaine. And he was a good guy though. He's a nice guy. And I tell you, being in the nut house, I mean, you were trapped inside. You couldn't, you couldn't even go outside for a smoke break. You couldn't even, like stick your head out of the window because you know people there are actively you know suicidal and homicidal like all the silverware is plastic right you can't have hard covered books right all the food is locked away and you're locked inside and uh but the nurses were incredibly nice the doctors were i mean the the main psychiatrist you know the guy who has a phd uh, the Siberian dude was kind of brash, but he really did help me. And uh, the nurses were so, they were such nice people. I mean, I could have walked up to them and said, hey, you effing bitch. And it would have been like, Sonny, go to your room. And I remember like, the first morning I was there, I'm just like fucking out of my mind, bummed out. And this uh, this black dude comes up and he's like, he's taller. And he's just such in a, a good mood. And you could tell that he really likes helping people. You know, as a, as a nurse, he really likes helping people. And he was so nice. And he made me feel so better. And we talked for like half an hour. And uh, damn, he was a good guy. Uh, there was also a social worker whose name was, uh, his name began with K as well. And he was uh, very nice. I had some personal problems that he helped talk th- through with my parents on the phone uh the very impressed by how nice the people were they were very respectful and nice i mean being in the fucking nut house you'd expect for them to be like a bit you know like disrespectful and derogatory you know to the patients but uh the nurses there are very nice there's this one bimbo if you're in the fucking nut house you're with people who can't form sentences who like don't understand the basic social conjuries so if you're a fucking bimbo, uh, put on some baggy clothes because uh, a dude's gonna, a autistic a schizophrenic is gonna fucking grope you 
that he has no control over his actions. So this fucking bimbo is like fucking wearing tattoos, wearing fucking deep V shirts. Like she's gonna get groped by a fucking autistic dude. But uh, I found out there. I don't know. Make sure there's no names on this. It might get blurred, but there are these packets you could do. These are pretty thick, but they killed sometimes. Don't ask why it says silver. I would never do drugs. This was a really, really nice read. It's like an interactive workbook. And, uh, I watch movies on the TV. It was like, like I said, I'm used to watching, like, freaking YouTube and, like, watch cartoons dot io with adblock enabled so like watching tv with like a third of the time being fucking ads was pretty fucking annoying but like the entire sunday passed in like a minute i got up turned on the tv and watched like three movies it was uh it was flags of our father which was a pretty fucking good anti-war movie uh, the transporter three which was fucking corny but it was entertaining uh, and then the final one was White House Down, which was okay. But, like, you get up, and you turn the TV, and that's how you spend your day. You just watch TV. You get to order what you want for lunch. I mean, you gotta eat with fucking plastic silverware. And, like, I would leave to get, like, a, a cup of water. I come back, and I leave a plastic fork on the table. And the, the freaking bimbo takes a plastic fork. You can't leave a plastic fork out for three seconds. Yeah, unless it'll get fucking snatched. Three fucking seconds it takes for your plastic forks uh, to remain unattended. Shit, like, what can you do with a fucking plastic fork that you can't do with two fucking fingers, right? What can you do with a plastic fork you can't do with a fucking... I guess it's a pretty weak fucking comb. But, yeah, they get, they uh, gave me some weak shit. And you have, of course, uh, glue fluoride toothpaste that you can't... Uh, choke on but uh oh shit and I grind my teeth at night and my mom dropped off some stuff they wouldn't even let you have my freaking mouth guards so I, I grinded my teeth a bit but uh all, pretty much it was a pretty nice day I had a really really it was really it was nice to be in a different environment it was nice to you know meet some different people and it was nice to, you know, break that rhythm of being in this house where I have a problem with, uh, with uh, isolation. You know, I really you know, put myself away from other people. And that really contributed to my, the, the depression. So being able to, you know, meet a ton of people, you know, as loco as they were, was very nice. And the, just I could just walk up to a, a nurse and just talk to them for like 15 minutes. And of course they would not be you know, genuine with you. They wouldn't treat you like a friend, but they treat you like a like a patient who's trying to be who's trying to be uh, you know cured. And it really uh, my symptoms. I had a lot of dark thoughts, and they helped with the dark dark thoughts as they made them seem like yeah they came from my brain, but uh, I want to be right, and I'm not wrong for thinking that way because it is out of my choice. You can't control you know if, how, how you feel, so. Uh, I stay there. They get me on uh, 0.25 and then up me to 0.5 over the you know, next few days. We play Scrabble. Be like me and the other, like uh, T and the S play Scrabble a ton. And uh, actually, last night I got out this afternoon. I met up with this kid named uh, D. His first name begins with D. He's one year older than me, so we're like the youngest kids there. And he, we talked for seven hours. Literally this morning, we, we, we met up, ran in front of the TV, we watched a ridiculousness marathon, and we just sit and talk for seven hours, me and D. And, uh, he's such a cool fucking dude. He had, uh, he, uh, his parents left him when he was young, so D grew up in juvie for his whole life. And, God, he has some fucking good stories. And he's a good fucking kid, but, um, he totally, he's 21. He's done meth, cocaine, heroin. He smokes a freaking Q a day. Uh, he was like 400 pounds when he was a kid. 
but he like lost all the weight when he started using you know hard drugs and you can see he has like very few injection marks and stretch marks on his arm from uh, how fat he was and uh, you could tell that he you know shot some stuff up he, sh he would mix heroin and meth and shoot it up he's like but I'm, I'm trying to quit that life he met his parents and his entire family when he was 18 years old and uh, he went in prison for age 18 and 19 over uh, assault and he kept on uh, fighting in prison he kept on uh, beating up people in prison so he was like shocked by a riot shield and he was in a yeah, year and a half in prison uh, he's for his, by the time he was an adult he spent a year and a half in prison before he was even 21 but uh yeah, D was a really fucking cool guy I, I mean from what he came from, it's uh, very depressing to hearing his story. But you know, talking with him felt really, really good. And yeah, we just, we talked all morning. I, I, is a good freaking kid. I gave him my number. Uh, but he's not. We're not going to communicate because he's still in the freaking nut house for another week. Because he just arrived last night. But uh, yeah, he's a really good kid. He has some really good stories. Uh, you can tell that I think a really big flaw of our society is how we treat nonviolent drug offenders as criminals when they really just need to go to nut houses, inpatient psych wards. But uh, what else? So you know, every day meet up with a doctor. Uh, he kind of he kind of mocked me a bit with my issues. I had a lot of you know I was trying to you know open up to him. And he's like almost mocking my problems, but I mean. He prescribed the right drugs, and my my entire family has a huge like it's a novel of mental health problems. Like my mom, she is bipolar, and she went to the same exact hospital, same exact hallway four years earlier, and it was like night and day. I mean, it's amazing to see what that doctor has done. Like I would take being a jerk for how he helped me and how he helped my mom. Uh, well, I have a ton of that's just. My mom is just the tip of the iceberg of mental health problems, and it runs in the family. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, also last night, a kid named P showed up, who looks like he's 22, he's 37, uh, worked at Walmart for his entire life, and he said the TV was talking to him. I think by that he meant the, the Wu flu, the coronavirus, which is in full bloom, as we film, you you might be in social isolation. You just might, if you're watching this one, just when the video came out, and uh, we would have had group activities, but we were practicing social isolation in the fucking nut house. Keep in mind, this is a fucking hallway. So I mean, if one person does a, a shit fart and gets the woo flu up in the air, we're all getting the coronavirus, right? If one person, you know, coughs on a doorknob. The coronavirus is getting around. So we had no visitations and all group activities were canceled, like cornhole or paper mache mask making, which was kind of a fucking bummer. Like, it wasn't fucking bored enough. Like, I have a problem with fucking depression, loneliness, and boredom and isolation. I'm not gonna go to a fucking different room. Actually, I doubt that's a lie. I really helped with my isolation to talk to a lot of people. But the boredom was definitely there. And God, it was fucking boring. Especially that my parents couldn't visit. I really, like, I would get on the phone and talk to my parents for like 45 minutes every night. And when I get out of the hospital, I love being sappy. Uh, a lot of people don't like it when you're sappy. But I really got a lot of respect for my parents. And I did some, I said some things to them that were very rude. And they were just entirely there to support me. And like people like uh, D, I feel really bad for because he didn't have his parents his whole life. And I come home to this nice room, I play Neo Two, and eat sunflower seeds. Ugh. And my dad cleaned my room. He threw away some shit, so I had to dig through the trash to find this fucking shirt. It was my dad threw it away when he cleaned my room. But I played Scrabble with my parents. Just finished doing that, and I really, I really love my parents because they really they helped me through it. The nurses helped me through it. Uh, 
the psychiatrist, the man with a PhD from Siberia. It was vulgar as he was. He really helped me. He really helped my mom. And I really benefited from being there. And I think it was long overdue to start fucking medication for my fucking depression. But, uh, no oh shit. Also got these sick ass fucking socks. They they have like non fucking slip. They're pretty fucking lit. But uh, yeah. So my my tip of advice for the nut house is do not uh if you feel like you have mental issues. Okay, first off, attempt to. There's a perfect mix of using the medical system lightly and getting cured, and. Uh, this Siberian man, he's very, very brash, this psychiatrist. And like me and Dee were talking earlier today, we were just talking about bongs. And no fucking joke, this bitch storms out of the doctor's office saying, that man is a, that man is a bastard. Fire that man. I want you to fire that man. He's so rude. And he just stands there and take it. But uh, I'm like, he's, he's like mocking me. I'm like, th- th- thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor, because he knows what he's doing. As rude as he is, he knows what he's doing. But, damn. So, if you have mental issues, here's what you do, all right? You you take it one step at a time. Uh, that T, that T girl, her, her problem was that she would, like, Google problems. She would, like, Google medical, medical conditions and then think that she has them, which is fucking stupid. Don't do that. Get don't diagnose yourself. Get diagnosed by a person with a PhD. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now, because you just start making up shit, it'll muddy the water. Uh, and uh, to begin if you have mental health problems, uh, don't try to self medicate. I would never do that because people who might hire me for a job might watch my videos. So I don't take drugs. I would never do that. <laughs> But, uh, nothing that's not prescribed. How about that? That's good. Uh, Jesus. Jesus is, Jesus is Lord. I'm a good Christian. Good Christians don't do drugs. But, uh, start with, uh, talk therapy. A lot of churches have talk therapy where you just talk to someone. They don't prescribe anything. And, you know, tell you things you might not want to hear. And, you know, talk, uh, teach you healthy thought practices. And if that does not work, See a psychiatrist, uh, be honest, don't expect to have drugs immediately, and don't expect the drugs to be, like, instant high happy. And, uh, the Siberian, I'm gonna end on this note. I think the, the Siberian psychiatrist said something really fucking good to me that really made me think about people who try to self-medicate. I don't, uh, do that, but he said, you can't borrow peace of mind. He said, in Mother Nature, nothing comes out of nowhere. There's always a, a trade-off, right? So if you borrow peace of mind, you have to pay for it again later. It's best to have your mind in a place that the ground state is peaceful. Because when you borrow peace of mind, you have to pay it back later. <laughs>